Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud. To the rock of our salvation, let us come before him with thanksgiving. And he's all in with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King of all our gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, he made it. And his hands form the dry land. And his hands form the dry land. Come, let us sing for joy. Let us come before him with thanksgiving, and his soul him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King of all. Good evening. My name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our PM services for Sunday, September the 22nd, first day of autumn. Uh, we will sing several songs of praise to the Lord, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will uh, be enlightening to you and helpful in some way. Here at Northfield, we sing from the songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. Perhaps you have that book, maybe you do not. If you have your own or you can Google the song, maybe you can sing with us in praise of the Lord. Uh, the first song that we will sing in our book is number 777. The title is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, 770, 770. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful mind, in purer lives thy service find. <clears throat> Deeper reverence praise, in simple trust like theirs who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord, let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow thee. O Rest by Galilee, O calm of hills above, where Jesus now to share with thee the silence of the eternity. Interpreted by love, drop thy still dews of quietness, till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress. And let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Please turn to number 376. <coughs> 376. He paid a debt. He paid a debt, 376. <clears throat> he paid a debt I did not owe. I needed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash away my way. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. 
He paid the debt at Calvary. He cleansed my soul and set me free. I'm glad that Jesus did all my sins erase. I now can sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. One day he's coming back for me to live with him eternally. Won't it be glory to see him on that day? I then will sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. And before we observe the Lord's Supper, let's sing number 350. When my love to Christ grows weak, we'll sing the first four verses. When my love to Christ grows weak, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> when my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to thee. Garden of Gethsemane, there I walk amid the shades, while the lingering twilight fades. See that suffering, friendless one, weeping, praying, there alone. When my love for man grows weak, when for stronger faith I seek, hill of Calvary I go to the scenes of fear and woe. There behold his agony suffered on the bitter tree. See his anguish, see his faith, love triumphant still in death. We come to this part of our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. We do this because we were commanded to do it on the first day of the week. The 20th chapter of Acts in verse 7 says that on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. It is something that they did in their worship service. So each time that we meet on the first day of the week, one of the things that we are to do is that we are to break bread. We are to observe the supper of the Lord, the communion that we have with our Lord. Uh, we know that uh, in God's divine wisdom, he sent Jesus to us. Jesus died on that cruel cross of Calvary. And uh, in that, uh, he was the perfect one-time sacrifice for all. He sacrificed himself that we might live. He sacrificed himself that we might have forgiveness of sins. And so as we look at these emblems and partake of these emblems, help us uh, to go back to the cross of Calvary and remember all that Jesus did for us. Let's pray for the bread. We know that uh, Jesus suffered great pain as he was nailed to the cross. And so as we partake of this bread, help us to remember the pain that Jesus went through so that each one of us might have forgiveness of our sins, so that each one of us may have the opportunity to live with him and the Father forever and ever in eternity. Let's remember that as we take partake 
of this bread, the symbol of his body. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. pray for the cup. We know that Jesus shed his innocent blood and we've come to understand through biblical scripture that this is the blood that washes away our sins. It is the blood that ushers in the new covenant, the new covenant uh, instituted by Jesus Christ that uh, those that obey his will might live with him forever. As we drink of this cup. Help us to remember the blood that Jesus shed for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <coughs> Having completed the Lord's Supper, we are also told to lay by in store that which we have prospered each first day of the week and give it back to the Lord. We're told in the book of James that uh, when we give back, we give back what was God's anyway, and uh, we give him but his own. But we understand the usefulness of giving back. We understand that Jesus died for the church, and the church is the kingdom of God on heaven, uh, on, on earth, excuse me. And with that, uh, it has a mission. Uh, that is outlined in the Great Commission. And uh, that mission is to seek and save the lost. Uh, it is also to help those that are in need. Uh, let's pray for the giving. Be with us, dear Heavenly Father, as we give back to you. Help us that we have laid by in store and have planned to give back to you just as we have prospered. We just pray that these monies will be used to further your work here on earth, that the kingdom of God here on earth might expand, that the lost may be brought to you. We pray that some of these monies might be go, might go to helping those that are needy, helping those that are less fortunate than ourselves. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we will sing is number 778. 778. The title is Be With Me, Lord. 778. Be with me, Lord. Be with me, Lord. I cannot live without you. I dare not try to take one step alone. I cannot bear the words of life unaided. I need thy strength to lean myself upon. Be with me, Lord, and then when dangers threaten, if storms of trial burst above my head, if flashing seas leap everywhere about me, they cannot harm or make my heart afraid. Be with me, Lord, no other gift or blessing Thou couldst bestow, could with this one compare. A constant sense of thy abiding presence, where I am to feel that thou art near. 
me with me, Lord, when loneliness o'ertakes me, when I must weep amid the fires of pain, and when shall come the hour of my departure for worlds unknown, O Lord, be with me then. I know that the Lord was praised in our song, and I hope that uh, you got into the singing, and uh, the Lord deserves to be praised because he is indeed our God. I have been doing a series uh, of lessons on Sunday evening. Uh, this series of lessons uh, stems from the title, The Way of Christ. Now, what we have looked at over the past several Sunday evenings is the way of Christ is the way to God. It's the way to life. It's the way to truth. It's the way to love, to joy, to peace, and to unity. Last week, we looked at uh, the fact that the way to Christ is the way of prayer. Well, this week, we are going to look at the way of the Christ. The way of Christ is also the way of forgiveness. Jesus taught forgiveness, which we will look at through the course of this lesson. Time and time again, through precept, that means the words that were spoken through the Holy Spirit-inspired scripture, and by example, Jesus taught forgiveness. Now again, I have explained to you that I am not a Greek scholar, but uh, I can pick up a certain amount of Greek words uh, for you. Uh, the Greek word for forgive is aphemai. Aphemai. And literally, that word means to send away. It means to give up, to keep it no longer. And so with that in mind, forgiveness is to give up resentment that we might have. The, that, that feeling inside of us that we need to punish. It means to stop being angry and to pardon those around us. And so let's look first at the way to forgiveness and how it is taught by precept, how it is taught through the words of Jesus Christ. In all of Jesus' teaching, especially in Mark chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, and Mark 11, verses 25 to 26. Jesus taught on prayer. His disciples even asked Jesus, how should we pray? And so he instructed them in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22, Luke 17, 3, and 4. And of course, Jesus even gave us a parable. The parable is found in Matthew 18, verses 23 to 35. And just to shake the cobwebs away, it was the parable of the unforgiving servant. When a servant was forgiven a great debt by his master, uh, you would think that he was so overwhelmed by the forgiveness of his master that he would have that forgiving spirit within him. Yet when someone owed him an amount of money much, much less than he owed the master, uh, he was unforgiving. He actually had this man thrown into prison. That was one of Jesus's parables dealing with forgiveness. This is precept. Jesus, uh, the apostle Paul in his epistles, uh, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 32, talked about forgiving our brothers. And to the Colossians, in Colossians three thirteen, 
it talks about forgiveness. For those forgiving or seeking forgiveness, forgiving others is necessary. Let's use that as a foundation. Forgiving others is necessary. And then, you know, very often uh, we are taught through example. You know, we, uh, you've heard the term role model, overused perhaps, but all of us as brothers and sisters in church ought to know that especially young people are looking toward us and looking toward our behavior, looking toward our actions. And with that, we are to teach them by our example. Jesus, when he was crucified in Luke chapter 23, verse four, said, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And then the man who is generally credited as being the first Christian martyr, Stephen, uh, when Stephen was being stoned, he called uh, upon the Lord to forgive these people. He said, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And so with that, as he was being killed, Stephen forgave those who stoned him. In doing that, he called upon the Lord. Uh, he called upon Jesus to forgive, and he showed his willingness to forgive. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? The Lord and his first martyr, Jesus being crucified, and Stephen set the bar for us in forgiving those that did very, very wrong but they were forgiven anyway. Okay, the next big heading on this lesson is the practice of forgiveness. We, we've learned uh, uh, the, the bones of it. Let's put some meat on the bones now. The practice of forgiveness. Well, I would suggest that forgiveness is one of those things that develops in our lives. In Matthew chapter five, six verses 14 and 15 from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, we cannot be forgiven by God unless we forgive others. Those are strong words, aren't they? And in Matthew 18 verse 35 and James 2 13, it says the unforgiving person will be punished without mercy. Again, strong powerful words about forgiveness. And why is that? Well, God put it very succinctly. Vengeance is in his hands. Vengeance is not in our hands. We're not to be the vengeant per people. We're to be the forgiving people. And so with that in mind, it helps us to remember as we forgive some of the things that work into this development of forgiveness. Sins against us pale in comparison to our sins against God. Because each time as Christians that we sin, we sin against God. Ephesians 4 verse 32 and chapter 5, verses 1 to 2, sets an example for us about how we are to forgive. And even to those that injure us, they need sympathy and love, which, according to Scripture, is something that we need to do. It helps us to remember some of the practical reasons for forgiving. Now I'm going to go off scripture here. All right. I'm going to go off scripture. Uh, all of you have heard of the Mayo Clinic, one of the outstanding hospitals and clinics in the United States. And the Mayo Clinic uh, did a study. And again, this is a non-scriptural study. 
And here's what they said. They said, here are some practical reasons to forgive. One, they say it leads to healthier relationships. Two, it leads to greater spiritual and psychological well-being. Three, it leads to less stress and less anxiety. Four, it lowers the blood pressure. Five, fewer symptoms of depression and anxiety and chronic pain are there when we have a forgiving spirit. And finally, it even goes as far as to say there's a lower risk of alcohol and substance abuse. Now, these are not scriptural terms. These are practical terms that are put out by medical people. And you know what? All of those things, although the Bible doesn't talk about blood pressure, it talks about anxiety. It talks about greater spiritual and psychological well-being. And, um, you know, we know Philippians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, where it says, Be anxious in nothing but by uh, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your, uh, let your, the issues that you have be known by God. And so maybe perhaps what the Mayo Clinic didn't know was that some of the things that they were talking about were actually scriptural things. Uh, next on my list is the ability to express our forgiveness. Now, the, the first thing is in this, we, we almost always say this, we should forgive others when they ask for it. In Luke 17, verse 3, whenever a brother repents, whenever a brother, one verse letter, later says he repents, now, here's a big question, brothers and sisters. Can we forgive those who have not asked for forgiveness or who have not repented? Now, it's true. God requires repentance and forgiveness. Acts 2.38, that famous scripture, uh, uh, that Paul talks about arising me and baptized that your sins may be forgiven. And so with that in mind, repentance is part of forgiveness. But here's the deal. You and I, we're not God. God is the only true judge. Oh, according to the scriptures, we can judge people's actions, but we can't judge them. God's perfect. God knows the hearts of man. We do not. And so very often we're prone to either misread or to misjudge. Harboring grudges um, hurts ourselves. It hurts us. It makes us embittered. Uh, I think the term, uh, the terminology used is judges with grudges. We're to forgive as we pray. Not necessarily until somebody repents. Let's go back and remember those two wonderful examples. Jesus, hanging on the cross, said, Forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. Did those people repent before Jesus forgave them? Stephen was being stoned, and he said, Don't lay this at their feet. Did the people that stone, stoned Stephen repent? 
Is that what caused Stephen to forgive? And so that, that's a, a wonderful example for all of us that we can forgive without others either asking or repenting. Now, what about that old bugaboo? I'll forgive, but I won't forget. I can forgive, but I can't forget. You know what that is? It's another way of saying I don't forgive. Forgiveness has to be like a check we voided. Let's say we made a mistake writing a check. It was mistaken. So we take the check and we rip it up. Some of you may have a shredder at home that you shred stuff that's not of use anymore. We shred it because we don't need it anymore. And we don't want to have record of it anymore. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is putting everything through a shredder, tearing it up so that all that's left is that command that we have by Jesus Christ to forgive our brothers. And so it ought to be like this canceled note. Forgiveness is letting go of resentment and it's remembering And remembering the sins is not forgiving. Why? Because you know what? We all have flaws, don't we? We all have imperfections. We all have things that uh, we can be adjudged by. And so with that, as we conclude the lesson, we've considered this evening why it's important to forgive others. First, to receive forgiveness from God to follow the example of Jesus and the early disciples. This simply confirms what we have studied already. You know, when we started this lesson, we said that, that the way to Christ is the way to God, and it was the way to life and truth and love and joy and peace and unity and prayer. And forgiveness has to be bundled into this. The path where forgiveness is both received and extended is the path that you and I need to be on. Let's finish with a scripture from Mark chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. And whenever you stand praying, if I have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you and your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. This is where it comes from. This is the foundation. We must be people of forgiveness in our lives. We are specially to forgive our brothers and sisters in the Lord because they're walking the same path that we walk. They are, uh, they have the same goals of eternal life that we have. And they have that same goal because through the Holy Spirit inspired word, they have joined Jesus's great plan, God's great plan for salvation to having heard and believed the word of repenting of our former life, confessing Jesus as the Son of God, and being baptized for the remission of our sins. That is your invitation this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, uh, get in touch with one of us, and we will be there for you. Let's close in a prayer. I pray to Heavenly Father that this lesson on forgiveness has hit home. That we know it's just wonderful uh, to be able to forgive uh, is scriptural and it is even, um, it's, it's even secular in many ways. Uh, you know, to err, we know, is 
normal to people, but to forgive is divine. Help us to take on that cloak of divinity in our life as we forgive others. I just pray that we'll understand the way to Christ and that we understand that forgiveness is one of those ways to him. Be with us in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. Help us as we uh, wake up and, and look at our day and, and examine what we can do today to serve you. Bless us in our service. Bless us as we uh, accept your comfort and try to comfort others in our life. Continue to be with us, dear Heavenly Father. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. And his soul and with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King of all the gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. And the mountain peaks belong to him, the sea is his, he made it. And his hands form the dry land. And his hands form the dry land. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord, let us shout aloud. To the rock of our salvation, let us come before him with